What's up guys, Ryan here from Mud Gunner. Today I have a pretty cool video to talk to you guys about. So it's gonna mainly be about one of my dream setups, but I'm gonna be talking about some other stuff as well. But this is the main topic. So you guys have probably seen my SCAR 16 on the channel quite a few times. It's probably my favorite gun. It's really hard to have a favorite, but if I had to just pick one gun, honestly, it's probably gotta be this. This has really been my dream setup for as long as I've been into guns, and even before I was into guns. I've always loved the SCAR. I grew up playing with it on video games. And yeah, it's just a sick setup. I do have the 16 and the 17. I've posted videos on the 17 as well. But today we're gonna be talking about the 16. So for a very long time, I have been running this uh, EOTech on here. So this was the very first thing that I put on there. And the day I bought it, I bought this EOTech. This is an EXPS 3.0, it's a tan EOTech. And that has been the optic that's been on here since, I'm gonna say 20, I either bought this in 2016 or 2017. So it's been on there for quite a while and it was very hard to take it off today. But as you can tell, we currently have a new optic on here. And this is an optic that's been a dream optic for me as well. Um, this is my first one. This is an Elcan Spectre DR. So it's a one to four power optic and it is built like a tank. Some of you guys might be familiar with it. It's also an optic that's used in video games, but if you're not familiar with it, this is a pretty well-known optic that's used in the military along with the ACOG. It's probably just as popular, maybe more popular than the ACOG. I think it's a little bit more versatile because it's a one to four power where the ACOG is normally just a fixed four power. So on this side, you have a lever here. So right now it's on one power. And if I throw this over, it instantly goes to four power. So that's pretty cool. There's no in between. So it's just one to four. And uh, yeah, this is a, this is just a very cool throw lever. It's very quick. Uh, it's got a crosshair in the middle. You can illuminate just the center point or you can illuminate the entire reticle with this dial right here. It's also got built-in iron sights on top. You can also add a red dot on top with a specific mount. I don't know if it needs to be cut for that or whatnot. I don't see any parts on here, but uh, this is my first time owning an Elcan and I just put it on here today. So I haven't shot with it yet. Again, it was very painful to take that EOTech off, but this has been one of my dream setups. And then I figured since I'm gonna put the Elcan on here, I might as well put the PEC on here too. So I had this PEC 15 on one of my other guns that I was running for night vision, but uh, a goal of mine would be to run this for night vision. Now this is not very night vision friendly, but depending on the distance, you have an IR light and laser on here that you can use as your main aiming system. Now, if I put a red dot on there, I could theoretically use that for night vision. But as of right now, if I use this as a night vision gun, which I do have night vision, um, it would be the IR illuminator and laser on here. So this is a L3 PEC 15. I also have a Surefire Scout Light. Now, this is something that I think I'm gonna change this coming week because if I'm gonna build this up and be done with it, I'd say the last thing I'm missing is the new Surefire Scout Light Turbo. I've had this uh, standard Scout Light dual fuel on here for a few years now. Um, my first light on here was an Enforce that was right on the side. Uh, the little 400 lumen light, not the greatest light, but it was my first light on here. And then I went to the Surefire Scout light and I ran it on that side, just the push button. And then I got a pressure pad. And when I got the pressure pad, I moved the light onto this side. And yeah, it's a 1500 lumen light, but it does not have a lot of candela. So you can't really see very far with it. Um, and this is a little bit gassy of a gun at night. So you have like, at least with the EOTech on there, I was shooting through the cloud of smoke when I was using this light but the turbo is gonna have a little bit better throw. So I think this week I am gonna replace this Scout Light with a turbo and it's 700 lumens, but 100,000 candela. And it's still gonna be the full size one. I don't think I'm gonna go with the shorty because it doesn't add that much weight and I'm trying to get it past the suppressor. Another thing I put on here this week is the Surefire 762 Mini. So I've been running the RC2556 on here for quite a while. I actually have a video going out tomorrow. I'm recording this on Saturday and posting this on Saturday. I have a video coming out tomorrow on the RC2556 versus the 762 Mini. They are the exact same size. This just has a 30 cal hole versus the 556 can. I do think it's gonna be a little bit less back pressure on this gun. And in the video you'll see tomorrow, it's slightly less, like it's the brass is ejecting more behind me in like the four-ish o'clock position where with the RC2556, it was more in the three o'clock position. So decibel wise, like how it sounds, it's very close. It's not noticeably different. So I don't mind running the 30 cal can on this gun because it's gonna make it a little bit softer shooting and softer on my parts wear because internally I haven't changed anything to it. It's still the stock piston uh, setup, like the gas piston setup. I can change it to a Parker Mountain Machine or a Mototech adjustable piston or more adjustable piston. I just haven't done that yet. 
Um, internally, I've done the Geisley trigger, so the, internally I haven't done anything other than the trigger. But th again, this has been one of my dream builds for a long time. I actually am even thinking about getting the final setup tattooed on me at some point. Um, I don't know if or when I'll do that, but I've always kind of wanted a gun tattoo and I think this would be it. So I am running a Viking tactic sling on here. I have the Geisley trigger. I have a Tango down grip. I'm running the Magpul QD sling mount right here. So it is out of my way. This is the Belgium reciprocating charging handle. So this does move, but where I hold it, it never gets in my way. It's never been an issue once. Again, I just put this on here today. I just put this on here today. Um, I just put this on here this week, but I was running the RC2556. And then I'm, pro I'm probably gonna change this this week because again, I've been, I've had this gun for so many years and I've been building it up over the years the light would probably be the final step as far as just upgrading the light. Like it's okay to upgrade and you know, years from now something else might come out that I wanna upgrade to. Um, there's even like a flat dark earth pressure pad setup that I've seen. I don't have it. I don't know exactly who makes it. It could be Surefire, it could be like Insight or whatnot. But I have seen a flat dark earth pressure pad setup that works with your light and your uh, peck. So maybe at some point I get that. But again, the black one doesn't bother me as much, but FDE would be nice. Um, I got some flat dark earth rail covers on here and all the rail spots that I'm not using. Uh, but other than that, I mean, this is just a super sick, in my opinion, SCAR 16 SBR. So this is the factory 10 inch. I did not have it cut down. Um, I SBR'd it back in like 2018. It took five months to clear. Believe it or not, this was actually my very first SBR. Um, as soon as I did this, it took, I submitted it in, I think it was like six months. I submitted it in May and got it in November. And then the e-file came out in November. And then I did my AR and that took 13 days. So I submitted that in November, got it in November, but this I submitted in May and got it in November. So six-ish months. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this. Again, this has been like a long time coming. I've always wanted an Elcan. And I, again, I have the SCAR 17, and if I ever get the Elcan one and a half to six in 762, like 762 bullet drop, I'd probably replace the ACOG on my 17 with that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Have you had any dream guns that you've been wanting to build up or have been building up? Again, this may not be permanent configuration, but I don't see this coming off anytime soon, but it looks very sick with all this stuff on there. And it's all usable stuff. So I use my lights for when I'm shooting at night. I use my suppressor, uh, main optic, and uh, yeah, the laser is gonna be for when I shoot with night vision, you need your sling. So I know it looks heavy and it looks like there's a lot of stuff on there, but I use every single thing on this gun. And um, even my iron sights, I don't know how well it works, but, um, not all optics are true one powers, but I can look through this and see my iron sight. So I'm gonna see how well I can shoot through this optic. Obviously you can't do it when it's on four power and looking through it on one power, you do see the peck in the way, but it's not even in the way. Your, your reticle is above it when you're looking through it. So I can basically co-witness my iron sights to the reticle in there. So it looks like the peck would be in the way, but it's not. And then when you have it on four power, you can't even see it. So yeah, just something to note if you do a setup like this, but yeah, super excited. I'm gonna be showing it on the channel a lot more. I mean, I already show it on the channel a lot. You're actually gonna see the SCAR in my video tomorrow, but it's gonna have the EOTech on there because tomorrow's video is just comparing the Surefire suppressors. But yeah, I wanna show you guys this. And then on a side note, I wanna show you some guns that haven't really made it on the channel and unfortunately aren't gonna be part of the channel much longer because uh, my friends are gonna get them for me. So this is a Sentry Arms Set Me Sporter. So this is like a G3 clone. At some point on the channel, I'd like to get a real HK G3, which is the HK91, but this has kind of been my placeholder. And I, even, I haven't even had a chance to shoot this yet, but um, one of my friends is gonna get this for me to fund that and some other things or pay stuff off. But yeah, this is the Century Arms Set Me Sporter, and I think it's pretty cool. I'm gonna shoot it tomorrow, and you guys are probably gonna see a clip of it at some point on the channel, but, but it's not gonna be on the channel for very long. So I've had this gun for quite a while. I just, there's guns that I don't get to shoot, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Like, if you're a collector like myself, you may buy guns because you want them, but you may not always get a chance to shoot them. So that's kind of on me being lazy shooting, but yeah, this is a very nice gun. Century Arms does make a pretty decent clone of the HKG3 that's not thousands of dollars, so. Yeah, it's been a cool placeholder, but there are some uh, more important things that I'm looking to get. And then another one that I've actually used quite a bit, but never really posted on my channel. It's in this bag here. This is a Wilson Combat ARP. It's their billet, pretty beefy AR-15. Uh, this is an eight inch. And uh, this was actually my backpack AR for a few years. Right now I use a SIG MPX, which you may have seen in my other videos, but 
Yeah, this is a Wilson Combat 8-inch 556. You might be wondering, why do you need an 8-inch 556? Well, it's kind of depends on your purpose. This fits in a backpack perfectly and it shoots pretty great. I was running a Trigicon MRO on here. I have Embus Pro Sights, a Radian charging handle and safety selector. It's the Wilson Combat two-stage trigger, but this is a really beefy AR pistol and uh, it's an 8-inch 556, but it works really well. I've ran it a lot of drills with it and yeah, I like it. It's got an adjustable gas block, but yeah, again, I never did an actual full video on this, but it has been a part of my life for a few years and this one I actually got to shoot, but yeah, it's hard to make a video on everything, but I at least wanted to show it because years from now, if I watch this video, I'm gonna be like, oh, I missed that gun because it's a very cool gun, but one of my friends is gonna probably get this from me. So I at least wanted to show it on the video. But yeah, I normally don't get rid of anything because I'm a gun collector. I really like keeping guns and I think I have pretty decent taste and I wanna keep like the guns I have, but if it's to attain other guns that I think I'll want more or have like a better investment value or interest to me. Like right now, I think I'm pretty big into clone guns. I don't know why. I mean, I do know why they're pretty cool and I shoot a lot, but yeah, I just got Larry Vickers uh, two books on AR-15s, volume one and volume two. So I'm looking forward to getting those in the mail and that's just gonna be books of clones that I wanna build. So yeah, this was a very cool gun, but I do think I can live without it. And there's always another gun that's gonna catch my interest. So I at least wanted to show you guys this, but let me know what you guys think on the SCAR build. And uh, yeah, we're not done. I always have a lot of projects I'm working on and it's just adding parts here and there. And uh, it's a really fun hobby and guns can be quite expensive. That's why it takes me years to get stuff built up. But yeah, I think the payoff is pretty much worth it. Like this is a beautiful setup now and I'm very happy to have it. And I can't wait to shoot it with the L-Can. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video. It's on the Surefire RC2556 versus the 7.62 Mini. Thank you guys.